pages. Mm. Okay. Ani le daidi vedava vaidi li. 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 I never, I usually never send out those shiurim. Well, also, you know, there it's near there, but the truth is yesterday, none of them, there was barely, they didn't really share anything. It was more just, uh, you know, but I felt such a, for me, I did the shir. I mean, hopefully someone else got something, but every year I go into this, like, what is this crowning of the king? What, what does that mean? As opposed, you know, I know, but I know what it's supposed to, Supposed to, uh, imbi- I want to feel it. So, what's the kavanah supposed to yeah. be when I'm standing there listening to this? Right yeah, Hamelech, you know. Yeah. Okay, well, Hashem. Okay, All right, we're going to continue to learn for uh, the Rafu Shleim of Yehudit Batzar. We should hear good news this week. Yeah. Also, Interesting uh, that there are a lot of other names were added on this week to the list, a lot. And Kimat, every name that I got had the name Yehudit in it. Yesterday in morning Shia, there was three people. Yeah. Crazy. Then last night, someone comes up to me and he says to me, I'm going through treatments, Yosef Rafael, I think his name is Yosef Rafael bin Yehudis. I looked at him, I'm like, are you kidding me? What is this? What is going on? Kevin Ross's son. Yeah, Aaron Tzvi ben uh, Esther Leia. Esther Leia, yeah. Lema. Okay, <laughs> let's go back into it. Let, let's go inside. Kacha, we're in the middle of Perek Bet. On the pages that you have in front of you, it should be, we're going to be continuing from page Yud Dalit. So it's the third page that you have in front of you. Um, who is it? Or in the first? First. First, Smicha. First page. This is the second chapter in the, in the, in the Maimar, Anila Dodi Vidodi Li. And this is speaking about what does it mean that the king is in the field? What does it mean that it's the month of Rachamim? What does that actually mean that Rachamim is prevailing in the world? Mazel Mer. And we began speaking last, night, last week about Pnimius Haratzon, Bechitzonius Haratzon, inner will versus outer will. We started talking about the bracha that now my kavana as a kohen is very different with Birkas Kohanim. Ya'er Hashem panav elecha, that the pnimiut of Hashem should be in, shining into you. You should know deep down inside what Hashem wants from you. And we're going to see today how when rachamim, when mercy comes down in its full form, like it does during the month of Elul, the produce of such a concept is that that the pnimiut of what Hashem Barach really wants of you is shining into you. All right? That's in a nutshell what we did last week. I'm going to read again from the top of the text. We spoke about this face-to-face relationship. Dahainu Israel. 
על ידי שיהיה איכר פנימיוס רצונו אליו יתברך, ודווקא פה בלב ונפש מעומקא דליבה במסירס נפש, כמו שקוסו במקום אחר. That's the last thing we learned. What does it mean to have מסירס נפש? So on, the, on a physical level, having מסירס נפש means what? We, we learned this last week. What does it mean to have מסירס נפש בוקר טוב on a, a physical oh. level? תכלס, what does it mean to have מסירס נפש? Giving your life. What does it mean? So here we're learning about another level of, of Mesiris Nefesh Boketov, and that's called Mesiras HaRatzon. That I'm com- spiritually, to be most of your Nefesh means, I'm willing to completely give up, you can give this to the Chavra, I'm willing to completely give up my Ratzon. It's a very, it's a very Boketov. This is a very deep concept. For some people, giving up their Ratzon is harder than giving up <laughs> their life. Mamash. You hear that? Mamash. For some people, giving up their ratzon is harder than giving up their life. Um, we could we could get personal with, with uh, in, in the home between you know in between spouses. She wants, I want. Okay, so giving in to Ah, so giving in is a scare that's a dangerous lesson because you'll get whacked if you say that in front of your wife. Aligning yourself. Aligning yourself with the Ratzon. <laughs> You're being very politically correct. With the Yerbona I, mean, I guess with our spouses, it's very similar to the way it is with the Yerbona that the, that the goal should be that it actually becomes my Ratzon. Not, just, not, not, that I'm, not that I'm giving up my Ratzon, but that her Ratzon becomes, becomes my Ratzon. I'll tell you a great, a great piece on this. There's a statement that says, Isha Ksheira Osa Ratzon Bala. That's a very hard statement to say in 2022 or ever, because what does that mean on the Peshat? Man, Michael just laughed. What? Just, what? We just laughed. Right, but like, 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 what, what, what is that? A cool. woman wants what her husband wants. Does, does. does. What, her, what her husband wants. Isha Ksheira Osa Ratzon Bala. Good morning, Reb David. Comes Chassidus, and it says like this, Isha Ksheira, Osa, she forms the Ratzon of Baala. Mm. Big difference between a, ma- a woman does what her husband wants, or a woman creates what her husband wants. So let's say right now, the Isha Ksheira is the Shechina. Isha, Isha Ksheira, Osa, she makes the ratzon of who she's marrying into, Knesset Yisrael. So, Mesiras HaRatzon doesn't just mean that I'm giving up my will to stand in this place of submission and compromise, and my whole life I'm like, you know, basically beneath my breath, I'm like, look at me, I'm giving in again. It's more a matter of the highest level is I become the will of... of my will becomes Hashem's will. Not just like, that's Mesiras HaRatzon. Giving up, giving over your ratzon to something that's bigger than you. That's on a. There's a lot more on this, so I don't want to. I don't want to st- stick on this. There's a lot more on this, but that's in a nutshell what it is. Mm-hmm. Now, when would you feel the? When would you feel the urge to do that? When you felt that going there is the reservoir of the reservoir of mercy of rachamim is waiting for you when you go to that place. You understand? I would go and moser my ratzon much, much more fast if I feel that, by, that what's waiting for me on the other side of giving, in, giving up my... Again, I, I, I keep on getting caught with this word, giving up by Mesir HaRatzon, that the, that the pool of mercy of, of just rachamim, rachamim, rachmanas. Mercy sounds not Jewish. Do you know what I mean with rachamim? That the, that the morning Yosef. That, the, that this reservoir of rachamim is waiting for me. Yeah, you got to give a Rashi on that. 
I, maybe I'm just projecting for myself, but <clears throat> it was in my house. It was always my way or the highway, basically. And not not. You're not talking about you. Growing up. No, I'm talking about my that the family that I created. That was like the oh oh oh, oh the, the family that you cre oh I thought you meant. I thought you no, meant no, no, no. the home. This is autobiography. Yeah, no, no, I thought you meant the home that you were born into. No, 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 no. no. Whatever. But, but with time, okay, because so is my wife beating me, but, but that kind of kisha, but the, is that, um, I said, hey, wait a second. It's not only about me. There's all these other people. And, and how can I learn to incorporate their rutsunas? And then I said, well, what does it say about me? Am I so small that the only thing I can hold inside of myself is my own rutsun? Hey, no, I'm not, I, I, can, I'm, I think I'm bigger than that. That I can hold multiple ritzonotes inside of me, and then I'm going to make a decision when I want to go with this ritzon, or maybe mm. I want to go with this ritzon. That's a beautiful thing. I don't think it's what he's saying here, though. Because here, here, Mesira, no, it is a beautiful avoda. Don't get me wrong. But I think that over here, when he speaks about Mesirata Ratzon, at least we were learning it is that mevatel et kol ritzonotav kadeh lekeim ritzonoi debarach that that there is an inyan of mevateling whatever whatever the ritzonos that I have for a higher ritzon. So I don't know how other ritzonot would still be able to can, to exist within me if at the bottom line the goal is batel ritzon chami pnei ritzono. Even though that's so I would say it's, it's just one shita elu veelu. What you're saying? Yeah, it's fine. That's true. Yeah. What I'm saying is that ultimately, God, when Moshe Rabbeinu calls God Elohei Ruchot, and he wants to choose the next mm -hmm. leader, so Rashi there says Elohei Ruchot because there's a, a lot of deot or a lot of ritzonot inside of Am Yisrael. Right. So if we really button right. ourselves to a place that we become more godlike, well, God is, God is, whatever God is. That can hold all these ritzonot. Oh, but Yeshua, but Rashi explains it, that actually Yeshua wasn't holding everyone's ratzon. It means that he knew how to interact with everyone's ratzon. But it didn't. It doesn't say that that he that he took in everyone's ratzon. But like, and that's how you know anyone in a place of hanhaga has to know that you have to be able to hear everyone's ratzon. But at the end of the day, you have to decide. So there has to be a hanhaga of ratzon. Do you understand this stuff? It's very deep stuff. It's very good what's going on. Yeah, Brennan. So, it occurs to me that I think it goes a step farther than what you said. Mm -hmm. um, about the rasa. And it also, well, I'll finish with it, but we were talking a lot in Shabbat about the shooing of the bird and then taking the eggs. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the Pasuk says that in the end, you'll have the eggs and they'll be good for you. It's basically what it says, right? And we were trying to understand this, what it says, and and it's and then I think the Ramban says if you <clears throat> your instinct is to eat the bird, but you put your your aside and you shoo away the bird and then you get the scar which is the eggs. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say what's the scar and then you said rachamim is kind of the scar. But, and and what I found was that you said that in the end what we're going for maybe is that our will becomes the will of the other. But maybe it's even one more step, which is that the will of the other becomes yours. Once you start putting yourself aside and getting yourself out of the way, then all of a sudden you find out not that that what I want to do is actually what she wants me to do. It's it wasn't that, like I'm not doing what she like. It's it's, it's even that, farther. It's than that, that it's that it actually is what I want to do. It, yeah, like I really feel like <laughs> now, like or or it's like I'm like. If it's your wife, all of a sudden you find that like what used to she what used to irritate her and you did these things, all of a sudden she's happy with you. And you kind of do not even like you changed, but mm -hmm. she changed because you started setting yourself aside and then you're getting a better life back. And then all of a sudden you Chazak. find that Chazak. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but listen, like I said, there's a lot to go from here. I was just trying to give it on a very simple level. But that's in a nutshell. Now let's go right there. So now, if you can please go into the, into the, basically, we're going to do it with the commentary. It's in the bottom left column, the He'arazo, in bold uh, print, okay? Over here, the He'arazo. This He'ara of, of, of Rachamim, right? 
of, of, of panim be panim, of, of Hashem's pnimiyut aratzun. Hearah zo hi nimshechet mifchinat ker. Shehu reshit kol hayud gimel midot, u mekoran uklalotan, kmo shekatuv, kel Hashem vayayel lanu. Shehu bechinat or en sof baruch hu atmo mamesh. So he's saying that this enlightenment of the gilui, of the pnimiyut, of the godly light, it's drawn down from the aspect of the word kel. It's interesting that you kept on saying elokei aruchot, right? What does this mean? So again, this, this perek is basic fundamental concepts of chasidus. That's, that's what we keep on coming back to. It's drawn down from the, from the light coming from the word kel. Kel, he says, is the beginning of the 13 attributes of mercy. Like we say also, Kel Hashem Vayair Lanu. When we refer to God as Kel, suddenly there's light, Vayair Lanu, the, the path gets enlightened. Which is the beginning of Oren Sof Baruchu Atma Mamish. This is like the closest you can get to, for, for God to be semi spiritually tangible. That means there's a lot here to sink into that we could have access to if we understand this inside. Everything I said right now is impossible to understand unless we try with the parish over here. Look at the parish beneath you. This closeness of Hashem to Am Yisrael comes from this inner depths coming from above. From a very, very high level. Next page. This is the aspect of what we mean when we say the name Kel. Shehi hamida harishona. What do you think he means when he says it's the Midah Rishona of, of the 13 attributes of Rachman, which is what we're in right now? Kel, Rachum, Bechanun. So it's the beginning. Kel, Rachum, Bechanun is the first attribute of 13 attributes of mercy. Now, we know like this. When something is the, is the beginning of it, it's the source of something, which we can learn from the headquarters of something, usually for the rest of whatever it's about as well. I don't know what you're going to say. Is that the first attribute? We don't know. It's a machloket. Machloket, because some say, no, 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 Hashem, Hashem. Kel, Rachel, Mechanan. But the way the Alter Rebbe is darshaning it out, no. Kel is the first midah of Yud Gimel Midot Rachamim. Now, this is very important to remember why, because soon most of us are going to start to say this more intensely. Especially when it comes to Yom Kippur, it's going to be a very intense, intense... Sivuvim, Sivuvim, al Gavi Sivuvim, with the Yud Gimel Midot Rachamim, it's Shaveh to invest, to try to understand what are the 13 attributes of mercy. Kale, just start with the first one. Kale, what comes from there? Go to footnote, on the bottom, footnote 20. Ki klalus inyan Yud Gimel Midot Rachamim hi hitgalut elyona me'od. The Bichlal, the 13 attributes of mercy, is a very high and exalted revelation. When, by the way, when did the 13 attributes of mercy show up in the Torah? First time was Yom Kippur. Second time? No, that's, that, is, that is the kind of, When does it come again? It, but it's not 13, it's actually 12. Come on. We're about to, wait, we're about to be wiped out again and not come into Eretz Yisrael. The Meraglim, the Meraglim, the invoking again of the 13 attributes of mercy. There we had a whole tire on this, 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 this year. There's only one of the attributes that's missing. Which attribute is missing? Let's see who pays attention in Shul. Who's an observant Jew? Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachu, Mechan, Erech Hapayim, Verav Chesed. Natsech Chesed, Alafim, Nosa. Ah, Yafem, Meod. Emet is missing when it comes to the story of the Meraglim. We're not going to get into that right now. What he's saying of you, you have to understand. When Hashem, when Moshe Rabbeinu was praying to Hashem to not wipe us out, he draws down the 13 attributes of mercy. These 13 attributes of mercy basically preserved Am Yisrael for, 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 for staying in the world, for the Torah being given to us, and for our stories and our lives to continue. Because if it wasn't for the Hidgalut, for the revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy, what would have been the end of the story of the Egel Azav? That you make an Avera, you're done. There is no Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur. There's no Mechila. So the 13 attributes of mercy, Kivyachol, create for us continuity. Believing in tomorrow. In Yehush Ba'olam Klal. 
That's the revelation of the Yud Gilamidas Rachmim. You sure are you with me? Yes. Oh. Yeshua's, you with me? <laughs> this is a very, no, this is like, if we don't get this, we're not, if we don't understand this, this whole memory doesn't, the, 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 I'm sure it goes somewhere subconsciously, but this is important to remember. Okay, that's the revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy. What's the first attribute of the 13 attributes of mercy which preserved the world and our existence with Hashem and the relationship with Hashem? Kale. That's how it starts. Kale Hashem Vayarilanu. Just before you go further about the continuity thing, think about it. most people who, who look at themselves as Jews do Yom Kippur. This is what we're doing at Yom Kippur. But that shows how powerful this revelation is. Right. Very good. That's exactly it. Why, do, why is it? What's drawing yeah, them back? Why would, they, why would that be the What is that? it? What draws them back? Because something came down with this Yud Yom Yudas Rachmim, the Hidgalut of it, the revelation of it is so, so powerful. Okay, back in footnote 20. Ki klalut inyan yomit atarachmim hi hitgalut elyona meod. Rachme Hashem itbarach she'ein lahem mida u'gvul. Why is it such a revelation? Because we're dealing with the infinite mercy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that has no end and has no limits. You know how we always, like, when we need, like, a boost of emunah, we'll hear someone tell us, you have no idea how much the Rebona Shleon loves you, and you're like, hey, he's just trying to make me feel good, right? That's, that's true. And we have no idea how much Rachmanas the Rebona Shleon has on us. It's, it's lelo gvul. All year long, I have to work very, very hard to feel and remember that. In the month of Elul, because I'm Melech Basadeh, that, what we just described, is much more approachable and it's much more accessible. Can, chazak, chazak, rachami, rachami Hashem. Certain things that I struggle with all year round that I dive in for, whatever it may be. Who goes seven kitzur in the month of Elul? Amen, amen shei mashich. Amen shei mashich. Rachme Hashem itbarach she ain lahem mida ugvul that they have no end. The rachmim of Hashem, they have no end. Forgiveness comes from this place. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back up. <coughs> We're up here in the in the parish. Third line in the parish on top. Daf Tetvav. You see it? Daf Tetvav. Over there. Oh, Third line. Sheheara Zoli Israel Vayarilanu He Bechinat Orens of Baruch Mamash. Kale Hashem. Kale and Hashem. Both attributes. Yud Kevavke and Kale, which is Elohim, right? Hainu She'en Ze Or Veshefa Metsunzal Umugbal. Anikra Chitzon Yut Ha'or. היינו כפי שהקדוש ברוך הוא מצמצם ומגביל את ההשפעה לפי ערך הנבראים והעולמות שהם כביכול חוץ ממנו. אלא זהו או לא יתברך הבלתי בעל גבול שאין לו סוף, אור אין סוף ברוך הוא עצמו ממש. לא תראה בסיין לגוס. This revelation is not contracted. Usually when I want to reveal, when I, in, in the parish years is that when a Talmud Chacham learns something. And he understands it in his head. For the Talmud Chacham to then give it over to someone else, a student, what do they have to do? They have to contract it to a certain extent in order to transmit it. Because you have to use words to transmit a godly concept which makes sense in their mind. So that's already a contraction of what the Talmud Chacham understands, what the Rav understands, what the Rebbe understands in his mind. But can you imagine if he was able to give it over, like, you know how we have airdrop? <laughs> right? Think about it, airdrop. What's airdrop? It's like, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not contracting. I'm, as far as I know, I'm not compressing. Maybe, I, I don't know. Let's say we're not, there's no compressing, right? There's no compressing with airdrop. So meaning, what, what am I doing? That's lehavdil. It's matrix. <laughs> right, lehavdil. That's the bechina of keil Hashem v'yar lanu Hashem, letting us know how much he loves us and how much infinite rachmim he has for us without contraction. That's the revelation of, that's what brings people back to shul. All year long, the, the love Hashem has for us 
And the Rachman he asked for us, for reasons that Hashem has, the way He designed the world, they're contracted. They're not as tangible and accessible, which causes me to kind of get lost in the game when I get a little tired, or when Amalek comes in and starts messing with my mind. But here with Yud Gimel with Midot Rachamim being airdropped to you, you guys know what airdropping is, right? Rabbi David, you know what that is? It's boom, it's boom, it's right away. This is what's happening during the month of Elul. Android analogy? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the... What the uh, you don't know. Google Drive. Okay. You have to, sorry. Jo- join, join the big leagues, right? I know, I know, I know. Not, she, not, not, not from that tree. <laughs> okay, back in the Alter Rebbe's text, the bold text over here. Ukmoshe Kosov, like it says... What does it mean that God, Hashem, your God, is, an, is, a, is an, a fire that's consuming? Perush. Just like the ray of light of fire, of the bright shine of fire, that comes out of fire itself. Anyone that's learned Tanya, throughout the Tanya, specifically in Shara Yichud Vayemuna, understands the analogy. Is there a difference between the ray of light that comes out of the sun and the sun itself? No. That shine of the, of the sun that comes down to here, that's the sun itself. It's just so powerful. It reaches, it goes through every masach. It goes through every screen. Look how he explains it over here. Al Hisgalus Pnimius Orahis Barach or in Sof regarding the revelation of the inner chamber of light of Hashem, this infinite light, it says, Neemar, Ki Hashem Elokecha Eish Ochlahu. Sheatam Shehit Galuta Shchina Nimshala Le Eish Dafka. The Dafka, the taste of the Shchina being revealed, is Nimshal Dafka to fire. Why Dafka to fire? What's a, I mean, you could think about this if you go to a medura, you go to a bonfire, and you see sparks that are coming out of the bonfire, right? Where is that coming from? Yeah, but what else is it? It's the fire itself. It's not separate. It's coming from it, and it is it. Now, you wouldn't put your hand in the bottom of it, correct? You wouldn't even put your hand close to it. However, it's exactly, mamash, the same source of it. He's going to explain it. Klomar. En ha'or ha'yotze min ha'esh k'mo hashpa'at seichel. For instance, the light that comes out of fire is not like the hashpa, the intellectual hashpa, like the, like the analogy we gave before about giving over to someone what you learned in contracting your mind. The Adam Alomedim Alcherim. Eino Dome Klal Shefa Sechel Hayotse, Benim Shach Mimenu El Mekable Dvarav. Legabe Svaras Ichlit Zo Atzma, Kshehi Bemochok Shelomed Latzmo, Masha Enken, Haor Vazi Vayotse Mina Esh, Hare Haor who bidiuk Mohama Or, Ule Mashal Or Hashemash, Shu Or Gadol Vatsum. I know there's a lot of words, and it may be throwing you off, because maybe a little bit of the Hebrew is hard, but again, we're going back to the thing itself. Godliness is a very big word. It's a very threatening word for certain people. They don't know if they're feeling godliness, if they're not feeling godliness. During the, during the Yud Gimim Yidos Rachmim, during the month of El, what we're feeling and what you, Baruch Hashem, described for us right now, is we're tasting exactly from the source of life itself. There are no mechitzas between, between the contraction. So you're wondering, then why how come I'm not getting uh, consumed right, if, it's, if it's burning so bright? Because it's, although it's from there. Although it's, no, it's, it, is. it is there, but it comes through a funnel. What's the, the only funnel that it comes through, that it boils down to, is that it's rachamim. It's mercy. It's not, a, it's not a fire that comes down and burns you if you get too close to it. It's a fire that comes down and reveals itself through the form of mercy and love. 
That's ani ledodi ledodi. That's where, that's where this is galus. That's where this revelation is being drawn down from. And when the end of a revelation is mercy and love, it doesn't burn. It doesn't consume me. It actually just makes me feel so privileged and so lucky. This is what's called the beginning of the Hisgalus Yud Gimel Midos Arachmim, the revelation of the thirteen attributes of mercy. Hasne Enenu Ukal. Very good. Very good. Now, usually, I can't relate to that during the year, but on but on Elul, it's relatable to me. That's what, that's the point he's trying to make. Why? Because this snebo air, this burning bush, is the burning bush of infinite and endless love, and endless rachamim. You see, the a meditation of anila dodi dodi li is that until you believe that all Hashem has for you right now in this moment is endless rachamim, endless mercy. Can't really understand what the author is saying. Is that where it's Kel Rachum? Because Kel is Midat Adin. The Midat the Rachamim is the Midat Adin in itself. If I'm out. If I'm out. Could be. That sounds very nice. That sounds very good. Back in the text. Kach Kiv Yachol, second on the left column. Kach Kiv Yachol, He'arat Panim, Hameir Leklalut Israel, Hume Bechinat Kel. So too, this he'arat panim, this shining of the face. Remember, he'arat panim means the enlightenment of what's panim? Pnim. What Hashem is... Re- it's very important. The Yair Hashem panav. Hashem should enlighten his pnimius. Not, you know, not just panim. His pnimius. He should enlighten his pnimius to you. So he says, so too, the he'arat panim. Hameir leklalut Yisrael is coming from the aspect of Kel. Shuhu bechinat or in sof baruchu atzma mamish. This is like this is crazy. This is the enlightenment. This is the aspect of or in sof baruchu atzma mamish. This is like as close as we can get to tasting godliness. This is what the Alter Rebbe is saying. It's amazing. You'd think that he would say the closest you can get to tasting godliness would be the mida of choose another mida. Huh? Come on, choose another mida. Ches, what else? I would think maybe yira. I think not just the yira, not the mida of the racha, maybe any any mida of godliness. What else would you think that the closest I can get to feeling Hashem is what through the mida of? Throw throw names in here. Yeah. Simcha. Simcha. Ah, but he's saying rachamim. Now I think I think and any one of us that are privileged to be parents can understand this, and all of us are children to parents, whether they're alive or not. What we really, really wanted, really, really wanted our whole lives is knowing that there's this reservoir of infinite rachamim coming from my parents, no matter what. Yes, it's, it's melubash be'ahava, but really it's, this is, uh, just mercy, just rachamim. I have rachmanes, my children. Ha'em rovechet alayf rotsim. It's really like the whole, the pnimius of the mitzvah of shiloh ha'ken brenner. It's having rachamim. It's the source of rachamim. Like that's what that's really what we all what, what we wanted. So we have a chance to tune into this in El, saying that's what Hashem really has for us. This is the in, this is in, an, in, in a, taking very deep concepts in the Zara Kadosh and trying to bring it down to our level. This is what the revelation of the thirteen attributes of mercy are. So when you're saying slichot and you're going for it and you're all thinking, oh Hashem, you see, I'm davening hard enough. You'll forgive me for that bad avera. That's the pnim, that's the chitzoniyut of slichot. What's the pnimiyut of slichot based on this? Hashem, ever, you could sing everlasting love basically all day long. And everlasting love, I have loved you for this. I have drawn you with my love. The mountains will crumble, the hillsides will fade away, but my love for you will not end. Who's saying who's saying that to who? I have to believe that's what Hashem is telling me when I'm coming before Him saying slichot. By the end of the song, who's saying who to who? I'm saying that to Hashem. That's the meeting of Anila Dodi Vidodili. Someone called me last week for, a, for a, they're doing a big show in New York this Motei Shabbos. He's introducing everlasting love to his Kila. And he asked me, what's the kavana behind the song? I was like, it's not my, Olive, it's not my song. I can tell you what I think about, and I can tell you what the person that wrote it, where it was coming from him too, but I'll tell you, for, I'll tell you, a little bit how, you know, I told him the story, how this nigun was written. And then I told him, but I'll tell you, for me, I get lost back and forth. I'm not sure who's saying what to who. 
but my love for you will not end. The serious Sarlatsan is, is that I know that my love, his love for me will not end, so of course my love for you will not end. And, and we're meeting each other at a certain point. It's kind of what we were talking about last night in Beit Shemesh, a little bit, with the chaver there. Ketzat. We were tasting it when I asked them to think of chaver that, you know, could I be. I raised my hand. Yeah, you're, 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 you up the I'm, percentage. I'm with you. Right? You up the percentage. I don't know if you can back in the word rachamim, but rachamim uh, really comes from this idea of a rechem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, if, that, and if, that's, if that's really what he means, it's the idea that I have, I'm making room inside of myself. That's what a rechem does, right? That's, that's Let it be our, you know, whether, whether, it, whether it is what he's saying or not, Tosh Ba'apeh means that we're going to say, okay, yafen, now this is how we're understanding it. Nachon. I'm making space inside of me. Shelter. Safety. Nothing can touch it. And, and the other direction is that it's like, I, you know, some, maybe some of us ask, or I ask, you know, does God have room inside of God for me? Mm-hmm. That's what Rachamim is. That's what is. Yeah. It's nothing but room. Endless room. That's, that's really what it is. So he's saying this is this is the midah of Kael, Kael Rachum Bechem, the beginning. Now he says, and by the way, you want to understand why your name is Yisrael? Look at this. Look at the look at the next type, the bold type of the of the Alter Rebbe. Belachen Nikraim Yisrael Milashon Sar El. That's why our name is Yisrael is the lashon of Sar and Kael. He's going to explain it in a second. Behayud. Okay, we have Sar, we have Kel. What about the Yisrael? Hayud more al hatmadat peula kmo kacha yeasen. Yud means when something is a Yud is put in the beginning of the word, it alludes to the co- the constant continuity of an action. Yeasen, right? This will be. It will continue to be. Upeirusho shebchinas Kel, who Sar umoshel bekirbo. But the perush is, is that this aspect of Ale is a menacing governor in our midst. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna let's 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 unfold this. Let's break this down. First of all, how do we usually understand the reason why we're given the name Israel? What does the Malach tell Yaakov? And then there's one more word, Batuchal, right? That means you struggled and you're able to struggle. You know, there's a someone I know that was seeking very heavy treatment for heavy anxiety, or what we called, uh, the woman called it yesterday, existential angst. It's a very, uh, right? Existential angst. And the, the, the person said, the therapist said to me, he's like, listen, your union is not to not fight. Your union is to fight, and while you're fighting, remember, hey, I got this, I could do this, I could fight. I know you don't want to fight. I know you just, you're tired of fighting. You're tired of fighting the stress, the anxiety. I know you're tired of it. But if you're looking for menucha in this world, in there's not really going to be menucha in this world. The only chap is to remember what the Malach told Yaakov Avinu. Ki sarita vatuchal. And you're able to. That's how we usually understand the name Yisrael. The Alter is saying, let's divide it now. Yud, Sar, and Kel. Now look at the perush. Vehine he'arat, man. Also, like the Israel is also in the, in the first letter of only Avot and Omarot. Right? It's Yaakov, Yitzchak, Sarah, Avraham. Right? So, Yisarita, Yisrael. <coughs> ah, beautiful. Chazat, tears? No, I heard that from someone. Um, Yudi Abraham. He said Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with Dafka with that. Dafka with that. Vidyuk. This is our name. This is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But I want to see the parish. I want to see the parish inside. Vehine Hearat Hearat Panim Zudi Vne Israel Enatotsa mi Toratam Bavodatami is saying I have to tell you something. This enlightenment, this mercy, you're feeling the love, this endless, infinite love. Um, 
I hate to break it to you, it's not because you were so from or because you were so holy or because you did things so great. It's not, that's not, it's not resulting from there. Other things come from that, Geshefft. But this enlightenment of mercy, because the guy is coming, the guy that's coming to show you Yom Kippur, he's not coming because, listen, he learned all the Ma'amarim of the Alter Rebbe, Yom Kippur, Yom Azei, Yechaper, That's not why he's coming to the... But he knows he could show up. But he knows there's something in him that's telling him, I'm here, I, this is home. So he's saying, this He'arat Panim, this enlightenment of the Pnimius of what Hashem really wants, is not coming because as a result of how hard you worked in life. This is an eternal aspect which exists in every nefesh of Am Yisrael. And that's why a Chabatsker will grab a guy who will have enough guts to stand in Times Square or walk up and down a plane at the risk of looking like, like a fool or making you know, people uncomfortable and asking people, are you Jewish? Why are they asking, are you Jewish? Who said is because they want to put tefillin on them. So you can say whatever you want to say about them, but, but, but where, is it, where is the root of, the, of this holy chutzpah coming from? Because they know that regardless of how good or bad they've been, there's a he'ara, there's an enlightenment that exists within them no matter what constantly, d- despite any, any toma that may have happened a second ago. It's not doesn't exist. This he'ara's panim is always there. V'zeh gama perush, Yisrael. This is also what the name Yisrael means. Otiot Sar El. Petosefet Yud Batchila, with the addition of the letter Yud in the beginning. Perush. Bechol Nefesh Me Yisrael Yesh He'aras Bechinas Kel. In every single, in every single Yid. In every one of us, there is this kale. What's this kale? Translated as something else. Infinite, endless rachamim. This is actually what ministers and governs in deep, deep, deep down inside of me. Vehayud bitchila in this letter Yud in the beginning of the Teva More al Hatmadata Piula. This letter Yud alludes to the consistency of an action. You have to know a little bit of proper Hebrew for this, which is definitely not your expertise. Mechila. It would be good if it was one day that we actually knew Hebrew, because we do live here. Yud ye. When something is yet in the beginning of a word, or yet, it means this will always be like this. Like, kacha ye asela ish. That's the example he gave before. Shehayud, the letter yud, meshameshet ala peula, shehi bilashon hove vetamid. What's another word that's like that? That, that the yud makes the action present and constant. Think about that in Hebrew. What's another word? Oh, very, 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 it's very it's very interesting you chose that example, because Yaz Yashir re, was referring to the present tense when when that when those words were said, right? It's not Az Yashir. Then they will sing. Although Chazal say it actually does mean that Yashir over there means that's what's happening now, and that's what's going to continue to happen. So I would say that is that is correct. Bahar Hashem Yira'e, very good. Yeah. Yira'e is a great one. What else? Yismach. Yism, uh, Yismach is happening now and will continue. I was also thinking Yibane. Yibane HaMikdash. So you could say that means... Uh-huh. Huh, then. Hopefully it doesn't mean that. It means this is what's happening now and, it'll conti- and it's continuing to be happening all the time. That's what the letter Yud, I'm just trying to give you, give you a taste of what this letter Yud does to a word. So Sar El, that in me, the infinite mercy and Rachmim of Hashem is really what's governing inside the Pneumius of my Nefesh, and it's like this forever, Yisrael. Listen, Hever, if we have this down, we could do anything. If I feel that Hashem's love and mercy for me is not only something that exists, but that right now in the Pneumius of my Nefesh, that is actually who I really am, and it'll, it's constantly acting like this. 
who and what can stop me from doing anything holy in the world? Or what will stop me from becoming the holiest Yid in the world? I'll get up for nates, I'll fill my day in with learning all day long. I'll, I'll just be a, 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 a mif'al of chesed in the world. If I'm living with the consciousness of what, what it means to be a Ben Yisrael, according to the Alter Rebbe's parish. For the Friday, Shir Yinafash. Yinafash, oh, very good. Very good. Yinafash. That's a great one, brother. Kedeperush Rashi. Al Pasuk. Ka'a. So he, gives, he brings an example. Like Rashi says, Kacha yase eyov kolayamim, kmo chen haya ose tamid. This is what Eyuv da was doing all his days. This is what he's doing all the time. The kach be'in yanin. So too in our matter. Shebechinat kel moshelet. The aspect of kel is a sar. It, it's the governor. It's the minister. It's really who's calling the shots in the pnimius of my nefesh. So if only I would just let myself listen to the pnimius of my nefesh, I would come to Hashem with Yud Yom Midos Rachamim and feel HaMelech Basada so much closer. Benefesh Adam be'ofen tamidu nitzchi. Dehaino. Sheyesh bechol nefesh mi'israel nitzotz elokus mamesh. Hamechai enaf sho elokit. In every single nefesh of Am Yisrael, there's a spark of godliness that is right now giving you, giving you life through your nefesh elokit. I want everyone to look at the person next to them right now in this room. Okay? And what you're looking at, I want you to look at what he just said right now, okay? This is very important. Yosef Rubin, look at the person next to you. Okay? How could you not look at Sasha? Why, what do you look at? I don't know, this is very good. Yeah? What are you looking at? You're looking at right now, there's a godly spark that exists that the person that you're looking at that's giving it life right now in this moment through the midah of kale. Now I give you a bracha to look at yourselves and do that's the hardest thing in the world and say that's what's happening right now in me. I could do it because I have a screen in front of me right now but that'd be very weird. I don't care. No, but the mirror is not the same. <clears throat> we don't understand this. Look at the, jump to the bottom, to the next piece of the Alter Rebbe's type, uh, uh, words. Okay. This is, this is, what does it mean when, some, when something's lemala mi chokma bina vadas? You, you, you can't, above our comprehension. If I'm just using my intellect, I would not come to this level of I wouldn't come to the place of if it was just based on my intellect. If I, if I was just based on my intellect, I could never come to the place where I'm saying, only you, whatever you want, because that's what I really want. Only you. I would never come to that place. It was just Chochma Bina Vadat. I wouldn't get to it. I, I, I would only, only come to a place of saying, right now it feels right for me, and I hope later it feels right for me again. But to decide and saying, Ani Lidodi. That's what it means. Ani? Ani. Yesh. Me. All of Ani? What am I saying in Elul? Lidodi. The all of who, what makes me, me, my ritzonot, my ego, everything, ani ledodi. Why do I say this? Because I'm tasting from the, from the bechina of kel. I'm actually becoming a ben Yisrael. I'm tasting my name. This is what's happening inside of me. So when I taste this inside of me, I say ani ledodi. I'll do anything. I, I remember the first time that um, she's upstairs. I don't know if she's going to hear this, but I don't think I knew anyone here then. Well, of course I knew you. I remember my apartment on Ben Maimon. Not the, so just there for like, came out a year. We lived on Ben Maimon Street, beautiful, quiet street in Yerushalayim. Ben Maimon 38 with a roommate. We both decided we're moving in and we're going to get married at the end of this year. And we, we both got married. 
Lamash at the end of a year of living, a few days apart from each other. It's a big, big hisgalos. I didn't have my glasses on one day when Bina came over, we were dating, and she had to get to the bus stop. I couldn't find my glasses, but she had to get to a bus to catch a bus from Yaffa. I was living on Ben Maimon. It's a little bit of a walk. And um, it, the fact that I couldn't see anything on the street after drop, you know, while I was walking with her, didn't, obviously didn't matter because I was walking with her. But then when I was <clears throat> walking home, it didn't matter either. It's, it's like the moment of Mesira Anila Dodi. It doesn't matter. Everything about the Ani, well, even what I need, I needed to see. There are moments like this in life. Ani le dodi. But this can only come because you have to be in tune with right now what you're in the presence of is infinite, endless rachamim. That is what it means to believe in slichas. That is what it means to believe in the revelation of, Yud, of, of Yom Kippur. And that's why people keep on coming back to Shul. Because they know... they. They can't explain it. It's lemala michoch mayaska yid that never comes to shul, ever. Say, I mean, but he comes Yom Kippur and you say your interview before he comes inside, sir. We'd like, like it happens in some shuls, unfortunately. It's a horrible, horrible thing. Sir, we'd like to know what brings you here today, right? Or where's your ticket? That's what they used to ask in America, right? Where's your ticket? Um, but let's ask, let's ask a yid in our heart right now. What, why are you here? Huh? I can't hear you. He's not saying that. That's what's happening. You can't explain this stuff. He says, Why? Because based on my logic, I'm not going to come and fast and give myself over on Yom Kippur. It doesn't make any sense. But there's something else that's happening inside of me. That's the Pe'ula of Yisrael. Sar and Kel is Yud, is, keeps on going. Bottom of the typo of, uh, in the Alter Rebbe. The Zel, this is what it means. Bani Matem, to who? La Hashem Elokechem. Ki bara kara de'avuahu. That means what's bara kara davua? That the son is like the is like the father's foot. It's like the, the father's leg. It's complete bittel. It's part of a functioning of the father. Shenichlal beretzono shel aviv bli shum tam vadat. I'm included in the rotzon of my father without any logical explanation. Kmo bechinat regel, like a leg shebatel legabei rosh ve'en lo rotzon shelo klal. Tell me something. Does do your legs have their own will? Did your leg ever start moving without you forcing it to move? What happens when it does? What is that, a simon? That's a bad simon. Yeah, why? That's already, that's a simon. That, that's, a, that's, that, that's a warning. But generally speaking, when the body is healthy, the leg has no will of its own. The leg is battled to whatever the, mind, whatever the Rosh decides. That's how he's explaining in the Pninius of who we are with Hashem. Bani matem Hashem lokechem. In in the essence of all essence, I'm like a I'm like a leg in my father's body. That's Ani ledodi. Ani, I'm a leg ledodi. I'm in the bigger body ledodi. V'zel next in the text. V'zel batel retzoncha mipnei retzono b'chdei shiayir el haadam bechinat pnimiyot retzono yidbarach in order. For this enlightenment of Hashem saying, you have no idea how much I love you. You have no idea how much endless rachmim I have for you. In order for that revelation to be loud and clear, and I don't have to work so hard on my emunah, but, but on the level of like, I hear it, I see it, I feel it. For that revelation to be clear to me, which I know is what we want so badly. What do you have to do? Again, v'zeu batel retzonchai pnei retzonu. In order for Hashem to be able to reveal to you what Hashem is really has in store for you, you have to mevatel all of your retzonos and literally wake up every day and say, only you, and mean it. 
and sing that song over and over and over again until it becomes mamish, your own anthem. And then, when that becomes your own authentic anthem, Hashem is like, okay, Yar Hashem Panav. Now I'm going to enlighten the Pnimius of my Ratzon, Eilecha V'yichuneka. And this will give you a chain to walk the streets of the world with. You're working for me now. You're like a leg in my body now, yeah. That is the Tznua of the Nefesh. That's the movement of the soul of Ani Dodi. I am to my beloved means Igati maskana Briya She'en li shum ratzon chutz ratzon shelcha. I've come to a healthy decision that I want nothing but your ratzon. The other side will put every stumbling block in our place to not do what we just said. Because once we do that, it's more or less game over on a certain level. What does the other side have? If I'm actually working for God, right, and I, and I feel like I'm working for God, and Anila Dodi, and then the Dodi is going to happen through the Hizgalus of Hashem Yom Kippur, what does the other side have on me? It has nothing. It has absolutely nothing. But again, in order for this to happen, this place of Hizgal, of the revelation of endless mercy, I have to go through the Bechina of Bitul Haratzon. Yeah. When you said the thing about the leg, actually, first I was kind of freaked out because, like, you have a body, and let's say chas shalom, I lose my leg. I'm not any less me. Still, like, I'm not. That's a I, great I, I, analogy, right? I'm not. So that kind of freaked me out, like, because, like, what Hashem doesn't need me. Like, if I. If he loses a leg, he's still Hashem. Hashem however, doesn't need anything. Right. However, then I started to think about it, and I turned around, and I'm like, yeah, but, like, if I have Hashem lost my leg, like, that would really, that would, like, I want my leg, like, I really need my leg. So, like, you know, on one hand, it's not going to diminish Hashem one iota if he doesn't have me. However, he, like, really appreciates and has, like, he really wants me around. Mm-hmm. Like, on the other, that's... Mm-hmm. So that, that's, that's kind of helpful in the rock climbing aspect. Is that's a great, that's great. Really needs us. That's great. That's great. That's a good one. You know, there was a, uh, I just, this is this <clears throat> sweet Torah that um, everyone knows that on, uh, before you dive in, you're not supposed to say Shalom. The shalom is God's names, technically. So, uh, so, let me show you, say, say, Sapa Damari Tel, and okay, we'll move on. So, what Shalom says that, um, he says, if you see a person, and it's clear to you that this person is a gila of Kosh Baruch so then it's like that, and so you can say Shalom. Mm. Mm. He, did. he did. He did. He did. He, he, that's why I wanted you to look at each other. That's the, that was the avoda. Like, if you're looking at each other and you're realizing c- currently, right now, the reason their eye is looking at you and there's a breath coming out of the person in front of you is because at this moment, right now, there is this nitzot that's, that's giving it life. So let's sikum, just to summarize everything. You have the next page also? You designed did I give you? Yeah. So just look at the sikum. Uh, not the kitsur, but the les- sikum. Right above it. This is very good. Les sikum. Just to summarize this parak, this beautiful, beautiful parak. This is a parak you could learn every day of the year, this beautiful parak. The sikum, ha-totza'a ba-avodat ha-adam me-he'arat yud gimel midot ha-rachamim. The result that happens in a person's avoda from that comes from the enlightenment of the 13 attributes of mercy, which is he'arat panavid barach, the illumination of what's really the pnimis of Hashem. He, what, is, what, what happens afterwards? That godly spark in me is not so concealed anymore. From me. From others also, but from me it's not so concealed. You could look in the mirror and you'll need, you'll need sunglasses. You understand? You'll look in the mirror, you'll need sunglasses because it's shining so bright into you. In a manner, be'ofen she'adam mevatel et kol ratzonotav, that I mevatel all of my ratzon, all of my outer ratzonos, for the sole purpose, k'dei ledaf kabo yidbarach me'om kadeliba, ad k'dei mesirus nefesh, to cling to Hashem, 
from the depth of my heart to the extent of even being willing, be moser my nefesh. That's how we can understand that we have certain stories of people mamish willing to give their nefesh. It's because the hidgalut, the revelation of the godly spark within them, was not contracted at all. At that moment of mysterious nefesh, it's in full bloom. It's full, fully there. So Bezat Hashem, we should be zolche for t- to taste this endless, endless rachmim and love as we go on with this mahalach of anil dodi what, 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 what we're going to get to now is understand the best place for this to happen is the sada. Hamelech basada, you understand? In the field. Jerry, in the field. You want to say what we've been learning the last few days on WhatsApp? What's tshuva? Doing more of what you already know works for you. Investing more in what you already know works for you is part of tshuva. We know how we can. We know what really works for us. We know. So we should end just doing more of it. Tshuva, we're always going to, how bad am I? Look, how about, how about how much more of what I already know that works for me am I doing more of? So the sada, the field, is where a lot of this gets revealed to us of what works for us and to do more of. We'll talk about that with Hashem on Wednesday, okay? Yosheh Koyach, everyone. Shkoyach.